Olá, fã do Nós Nerds, estou aqui para apresentar um bloco novo que a gente está criando com a nossa primeira entrevista internacional via vídeo com Martin Nicolaisen. O cara é um dinamarquês, jogador de Magic the Gathering, que tem mais de 75 mil cartas é, do jogo. É, então a gente bateu um papo bem, bem descontraído, bem tranquilo, fica aí assistindo. O, a conversa foi em inglês, mas se você clicar aqui no vídeo, nesse lugar aqui, vai ter as legendas, e aí pode ter a legenda em inglês, que é gerada automaticamente pelo YouTube, ou você clica em tradução automática, que ele gera para o português. Tá legal a tradução, e em inglês também dá para pegar alguma coisa. E fica até o final do vídeo, porque a gente vai colocar uma cena pós-crédito lá, então é um negócio especial para vocês. Falou, um abraço, espero que aproveitem. Hi everyone, I'm Chris. I'm talking from, from Nos Nerds. We're here with our first interview with our guest, Martin Nicolaisen, uh, and we'll be talking about magic cards. And don't worry, we won't be doing any tricks like pick up a card from the deck, don't show me, and I'll try to figure out what it was. We're talking about Magic the Gathering cards, which is something that's been out for many many years now it has a lot of fans a lot of collectors and i'm talking to can i can i say you are one of the top 10 collectors in denmark of these cards well i i wouldn't really feel confident about it like i don't know i i'm sure that there are lots of people around who are um, way more into it way more bigger collectors than i am but i don't know anybody who Okay, so I can say you're, you're the biggest magic magic cards collector in Denmark that I know about and that you know about. So, yeah, source source <laughs> pending. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that would be would be the way to classify it. Okay, so thank you for 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 this this interview. And actually, I, I wanted to start asking you, uh, at, at what age did you start? How did you just start collecting these cards? When did you first see one? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it goes, it goes back quite a while, this stuff. Like, the card game itself came out in, uh, late in 1993. Uh, but I, I didn't know about it until 1995. I was 14, 15 at that time. And I think it was some classmates first introduced me to it and I wasn't really into it. But then my younger brother started playing with his classmates too and I was like reluctantly saying, all right, all right, I'll try it out. And um, yeah, then I got sort of hooked on it. So it, it's been on for quite some time, I guess. So it's on and off for about 22 years now. Wow, that, that, that's, that's probably the longest hobby you have so far, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so uh, mm. let's say, Some people that are watching this video may not know what, what Magic the Gathering is. Can you can you just briefly explain what it is? And, and yeah. guys, if, if you're watching this video and you don't know what we're talking about, shame on you. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it, it's sort of an sort of an old school thing nowadays, but with like you know with physical cards, like it's not so much just sitting playing in this stuff online. You can do that too with digit, digital cards. And that came later, but it's um, it started out as a as a collectible card game. Like the idea being that some small game that's easy to put in the pocket and play with a friend uh, if you have 10, 15 minutes downtime between whatever, I uh, know, sitting on the bus, playing, waiting for the next Dungeons and Dragons session or whatever going on that you you'd want to do in, instead. Um, but, but it really picked up uh, as a popular thing. So it's like. Uh, each player sort of makes their own set of cards, a selection of stuff that they want to play with, and then they play against another player uh, who has made their own selection of stuff. And then, yeah, you, you try to see who who has made the smartest stuff. Like you can interact with each other's cards, and okay. so it's basically a, a combat. It's like a two-on-two -two combat where where not necessarily who has the best cards, but who makes the best use of cards will win. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. It's in some ways, each player takes on the role of a sort of wizard or planeswalker character, and you use the spells. That's like each card can be a spell. Like you use that to try and uh, take out, remove the opponent's resources, and then you can 
use some cards that damage the opponent's life total, or uh, else you can make some use some cards that counter the opponent's attempts to remove your life total. So, um, with a a nice mixture of um, aggression or uh, control or uh, tactics. But no blood involved, be... or sh shouldn't be no blood involved. Uh, yeah, well, uh, no, no literal, literal blood involved in that. So it, it's like it's um, they've they've been sticking to like sort of high fantasy themes throughout the the history of the game. So you summon elves and dwarves and yeah, and dragons and angels, but you, those kinds of but things. But you Some never creatures. engaged. You never engaged in any physical fight with somebody you were playing you with any disagreement or anything like. Except your smaller brother. I understand you hitting your smaller brother because of the game, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that ties into whatever else kinds of games you'd be playing. So, if it's you know like a, a Street Fighter battle on the. <laughs> And the video game that sort of carries over <laughs> onto the next level. <laughs> okay. But it, but usually there's people just play the cards and they don't fight each other physically. Ah uh, yeah yeah it's it's um it's usually very very calm and organized. Sit on each side of the table and um, it's very rarely that these things end with the table being flipped over in anger. So good to know. Yeah. You, you mentioned <laughs> uh, digital versions of of Magic games I, i've yeah. seen on video games some some digital versions which is basically the same thing but you play online and and now actually yeah. uh they came out with a i would say it's a similar game it's called gwent with digital cards yeah did you ever play magic or any similar games on on the computer or on the video game or, or you stick to the physical old school cards well yeah uh, i've tried a bit of both like I prefer the old school physical cards and I don't know if this is me being like first introduced in the 1990s to to the game back then but but um I I play a bit of the digital too it exists in two versions like there's one version that's free to play and with a limited selection of cards and uh, I I play that one maybe I'm a bit stingy feeling like no I should not spend double <laughs> money on this game both physical and digital but it exists as digital too where you pay pay real life money to have digital cards okay um, and yeah. well and th this is a question uh the cards they probably have some uh you can you can still buy new cards nowadays right i mean they're they're constantly oh, yeah. bringing out new versions of stuff like that yeah yeah and and the cards they have some some that are more rare that are more powerful and 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 stuff like that yeah yeah it, it does it's like uh, the manufacturers of the cards it's um yeah a, a company called wizards of the coast now uh, owned by hasbro gaming company but, hasbro but it's very much that, a business that owns them. Uh, transformers and ah uh, yeah and all that yeah a, big game. a lot of stuff but like yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, all sorts of stuff. Barbie, maybe too. No, that's Mattel. Uh, well, they're into a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, I think they even have a sort of monopoly on the Monopoly game. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, they have a monopoly on the Monopoly game, so it's like an inception. Of yeah, yeah they, they, they're really branched out. And um, well, Magic the Gathering, that's one thing. Uh, they, they, they. They bought the the company in the late 1990s, I think. So it's been for a long time. But but this thing that is still a business, it means that not all cards are equally easy to obtain. And some of the more interesting cards, uh, gameplay wise, they are more rare. Like the thing is, the the, the business model is to sell uh, some sealed packs with some maybe 15 randomized cards in them. And um, yeah, well you have. Well, the odds of getting copies of the most interesting cards are not super good, so of course they, it encourages people to buy a lot of that product. Okay, so the, the more you buy, the more chances you have of getting a rare item or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it works in in that way in some ways. Yeah. So everybody yeah. that plays video games nowadays is familiar to that because every single game now has a special either card system or loot equipment system or stuff like that and you're always like oh my god i got this i don't know golden item or stuff like that so uh yeah so 
Yeah. What what is uh, uh, in, in terms of, of of value? How much can a one of these r super rare cards be worth? I mean, have you ever seen probably on eBay people selling it for a, the shitload of money? In it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 become kind of crazy in this in this way. Like the first few years, couple of years of the card game, like 1993, 94, around that time. It was a bit, um, they were still trying to find their way. So they happened to make some cards that they later found out like, oops, this is a little bit too powerful. It sort of breaks the game apart. So okay. they made some promises not never to print those cards again. But uh, that means that some of those old cards from the early 90s, they have become very, very valuable nowadays now that they have been out of print for more than 20 years. Okay. And as the player base has also grown, um, so, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly how many plays today. I think I heard some estimates around 25 million people worldwide. Wow. So, a bunch. Um, but yeah, some of the old cars, they, they are very valuable. So, yeah, you see prices ranging in thousands of dollars on, on some of those. Wow, so uh, like, you could sell a card for like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, a super rare car, can you get to this price maybe? Maybe I think yeah some of the the early print run cards wow. are, uh, the oldest ones they can get that uh, I, I see some eBay listings from time to time even like someone optimistically asking for a hundred thousand dollars for a rare graded collector's item thing I'm not sure they've actually sold at that price but but anyway if you eBay uh, Magic the Gathering cards you you can find stuff oh. uh, in that range. Uh, I'll I'll look it up later. So you mentioned that there are probably around 25 million people around the globe that still play Magic the Gathering. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is, yeah. we're talking mainly the, the physical game, not not any online game and stuff like that. This is... Yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult to estimate. Like the company, they are slightly, they're, they're a bit secretive with some of the numbers. So, um, but yeah it's i think it's around that vicinity like the thing about this card game is that at least what a, a common thing i hear repeated on the internet is that people rarely uh, well uh, leave the game for good like some people they leave it for 10 15 years or something and then they come back okay so and with new generations of young people teenagers 20s they pick it up too so i think overall the the player base has been increasing yeah. and uh, as for prices of the old cards, like sometimes kids who played in the 1990s but are now in their late 30s, early 40s with nice paying jobs and they can afford hobbies, then they, they, sometimes they don't blink just shelling out big bucks for cards they loved as kids. Yeah, this is the problem. When you're, when you're young and you have time, you don't have the money to buy the expensive cards. How, how much uh, yeah. a normal deck will cost nowadays? Like three, four dollars, uh, something like that? Yeah, it's, it's it's very difficult to figure out. Like they they issue new cards two, three times a year. So if you want to keep up with something that's competitive and very modern, it it could all cost I don't know like five hundred to a thousand dollars to to keep you. Oh no, but I mean, a, a, you said that it's sold in 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 closed packages. Ah uh, yeah like, yeah. I, I'm they're pretty sure there are some uh, some. Yeah. Uh, uh, more expensive packages, but I say the standard one. If I wanted to go to a store, uh, the standard, oh uh, yeah, the standard random packs. It's uh, I would say like around three, three to four US dollars a pack uh, around that. Okay. Uh, of course, some discounts for people who buy a whole box at a time, uh, sure. which many, I'm sure. So, um, yeah. Sure. So and, and out of those, yeah, you select stuff to play with and rarely well usually if you want to have something that's competitive you you need a lot of packs or you just pay up front for single oh, sure, cards sure and and I, I imagine that with uh this amount of people playing the world there are a lot of is there like uh, championships is there an official league where people play each other yeah yeah the, the, it's quite organized actually they have um yeah, there, there's ongoing online version leagues. There's they're promoting local local game stores around the world to have hold tournaments, give out prizes. They issue promotional cards as prizes and that. And they have a Grand Prix around the world, and they have World Championship every year uh, since 1994. I think they've held that thing. Um, and well, 
yeah, and big money gets involved in the big tournaments so too. This is a predecessor of esports that are now very big today. That people play huh? uh, League of Legends championships and Overwatch and Gears of War. So you you guys have been doing this for like 20 years without uh, internet connection, without uh, yeah. networking. Or yeah, yeah, indeed. It, it is a bit of a, a precursor to a lot of the esports things, but they've had a they've had some troubles how to 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 broadcast these things because like they're playing with these small physical cards and some of these players they move them quickly and <laughs> like just getting a nice camera view of stuff going on is it's really been a challenge it seems so like it's um, it hasn't been easy to promote but but it's going on like on Twitch TV and stuff. Uh, they are, they are broadcasting, streaming stuff Did you, almost every weekend nowadays. Have you ever watched one of these tournaments? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's some nice stuff to enjoy watching or keeping in the background from time to time. And there's a whole circuit of pro players uh, who, who yeah, just travel around the world playing in tournaments and uh, apparently make enough of a living. Do, do they have do like, so. they have their own like teams and, and, and fan base and stuff like that? and. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely, and uh, there's people, individuals who are streaming their games uh, live on the internet, uh, playing digital, or sometimes they even put webcams uh, over a table and then play physical card games that way too. Cool. Um, yeah. Cool. It's like it's like what we see in video games, but but let's say card old school. Oh yeah, yeah, in, indeed. And, it, and it's really growing. It seems like uh, e even among older players, I see that in the past couple of years, more and more players have uh, like that used to play in really old school players. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early 90s, they're coming together playing over Skype and, and various other means and with some homemade sets of rules, like saying like you, you're not allowed to play with any card that's been printed after 1994. Okay. So sort of to keep it old school. Okay. And, and and there should be some some honor system because if if I'm playing here, you're not seeing my deck, so I could have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of cards here, like and just be selecting it out. So I believe that, that yeah, yeah. trust and honor is a big issue in in this in this stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. In this particular thing, yeah, it is. Well, uh, but but well, the standard thing for most players is to play it uh, on the Magic Online, uh, where it's uh, a server hosting all the the data and that. So to keep it pretty level and fair for everyone. And did so, you ever take part in any tournaments? Well, I've, I've mostly avoided these things. I'm a very casual player. So it's, for me, it's like, ah, it's too much hassle and going out playing random people. So I'm more like with sitting with three or four guys, uh, local, like my, my friends from back in the 90s and sit, drink a beer or a, I don't know, yeah. like a, have a little port wine and sip and <laughs> and, so you're more a, ca a casual, cards. friendly player. You're not into big competition. Ah, uh, no, no. So uh, I think one of the only times I played it for competitively it was last year, or the, no, two years ago. There was a, a a Grand Prix event at a big congress hall close to Copenhagen, where I live. So I, I just went there with with my cousin to check out this place and see, hey. You know, there's more than a thousand players from around this play around the world gathering here. Uh, let's go see what it is all about. So yeah, went there, just yeah, had some fun. I, I brought a couple of cards. Like I heard there was a, an artist who had illustrated cards who was around. So I thought, hey, I'll see if I can get an autograph. That'll be the top of the day. Cool. Well, anyway, once we were there, we decided to to try and well, why not go? We're here anyway. Let's try and play some games. And then we signed up for a tournament, which went surprisingly well. Uh, so it was like a team play. Uh, well, we, we ended up taking second place in that wow, one. That's just my husband and I. That's so pretty good for a casual player. player that wasn't even pretending to play, right? <laughs> yeah, I think we, we were a bit lucky, and or, or maybe we were more competitive normally between the, ourselves than than we than we thought. We thought we were completely casual. Cool. But, but anyway, with luck or skill or combination of both, we managed to do surprisingly well. So. We, we walked out of that tournament with a whole pile of uh, prize things <laughs> we didn't expect at all. Wow, that's, so a fun day. That's a pretty nice story. And apparently there are also conventions about this. Conventions? Uh, so, yeah. Trade shows or, or, or congress or stuff like that. So where, the place you went to. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was sort of a, a Grand Prix, like a, 
yeah, like uh, it was all focused on Magic the Gathering. It was big enough that they could could hire or like book a whole convention center for it. Wow. So is there like, uh, for example, for for video games, there is like the E3, which is the let's say the the biggest event of the year re regarding video games. And then you have for automobiles, you have the the the, the auto trade show in Frankfurt and stuff like that. Do they also have like the biggest event of magic in the world, or is is there like this? Something? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in in the U.S. Like they they are very big on these things. Um, I think the game premiered at a at a convention back in 1993. I think Origins it was called, and but but now I think what are they called? I think it's something like uh, PAX conventions in oh, the US uh, I know PAX. that uh, they, they they use those places to prom promote new materials to make, uh, yeah, to to publicize what what are we printing next, what are we making? Or, or maybe uh, Comic Con probably too. Which... Uh, yeah, yeah, that one too, yeah. They, they have a big showing there and uh, as this thing grows, like it, it branches out. There are more people into cosplay as well that are sort of dressed up, matching uh, images they saw on these cards. Oh, so really? So, so there's there's also cosplay involved in, in the in the cards? Yeah, increasingly, it seems like it's a small subset of people who are into that. But, but go to a convention and, and you'll see a handful of people so in these cards, you have some specific heroes or classes or anything like that that people will, will, will cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are some more and more iconic, and I think it, it was an issue that the card game has struggled with for a long time. Like uh, it, it was sort of, it didn't really have a, a main character, a set of main characters for a long time. So uh, they, they've been trying to work more on that lately in more recent years to make more of a storyline and to have repeat characters and that and. And I think there's even a uh, there's even a Hollywood movie in the making based on some of this. Uh, really? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure heavily promoted through Hasbro as well. That really like that commercial side of oh, well. of their franchises. I'd say it's so, it's a very nice time to be a geek right now because I mean, oh, yeah, you yeah. got comics, you got video games, you got magic cards, you got movies. I mean, everything is revolving around this. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Re regarding yeah. this, uh, besides Magic the Gather Gathering, are, are you into uh, uh, comics, superheroes, video games, any other geek, nerdy related hobbies? Ah, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, I know if it's, it's it's going on and off. I don't know how much if it's me or being a kid of the 80s and 90s, and there's a lot of stuff I grew up with that I really just like still like well I think I can even like oh I see uh, with some of the stuff I'm into like you know Watchmen and other 80s amazing comics these kinds of things did and, you like uh, the movie stuff yeah 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 I, I watched the movie I, I I enjoyed that one too. Okay. So many people that that read read the book and the comics don't didn't like the movie so it's that, that's why I always ask. Ah, well, depending on the version of the movie, I like the director's cut, the very long four hour cut that was pretty close. Um, uh, I like that way more. Uh, it's not perfect, but I think the, the movie did a pretty fine job of sticking to the, the storyline mostly. Um, cool. What, what's so, your favorite comic book character? Doesn't have to be from Watchmen. Do you have a favorite one? Uh, it's it's very difficult. Well, anyway, like that would, may, would have to go back to my teenage years. And well, thinking since we'll have this topic, I just managed to grab some stuff from the bookshelves to bring out. Sure. I don't know if you know of this uh, from around where you are, but this is it's a bit metal perhaps nowadays. Torgo, but it, never heard. Uh, well, it's um, a Polish comic book uh, illustrator. Dude. Made some stuff in the 80s and 90s is and early 2000s. Um, well, with um, yeah, I think a French writer behind. So some European comics about some. Um, it's mixing some Viking stuff with sci-fi, and it was pretty awesome to a teenage kid well, like me. If if anybody watching this movie have has ever heard about this comic, please please leave it on the comments because 
I, I never heard of it. I never heard of a Polish comic movie comics written by French people. So this <laughs> just blew my mind right now. And I'm <laughs> curious to know if other people also follow it. Wow. No. I found it awesome. Definitely. Yeah. The, and, I was uh, expecting something like Batman or Hulk or Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, maybe some some of that. Like I remember watching like Batman television series. I think some of those campy '60s stuff on Danish TV in the 1980s. But some of the stuff I was really into back then is I found on DVD later. There was oh, stuff, stuff like this. Night Rider. Yeah, that, that's that was really as for TV and entertainment for a kid. That was like that was amazing. Mm. Also with David Hasselhoff, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, like, really. <laughs> the TV shows in Denmark, are they subtitles? Like, you have English original audio and subtitles, or do they oh, yeah. dub the movies? Oh, it's subtitles. Uh, the country is so small that it, it's too expensive to dub them. So uh, we grew up with subtitles. Oh, I'm, I'm so disappointed, because I really wanted to see Batman speaking in Danish. <laughs> Well, at, at least when I, I watched those things, uh, it was all uh, with the the English versions. Uh, uh, I don't know if they do it nowadays with, with the Danish. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely look up for it, because it must well, be fun. It's, uh, minor market. But other than that, like the, the as a 1990s kid, I was really into it. It was video games, uh, like for the, the TV. I think I can, I have it actually next to the computer, you know, just to, to bring on the Images, but like the old Sega systems. Oh, the Sega, the 16-bit Sega. Ah, uh, yeah, and the 8-bit too. But uh, yeah, I have that one else, elsewhere. But it's um, that was really stuff I love to play. And, does it uh, still work? Oh yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, it's actually I, I went pretty deep on this particular one. Uh, it's uh, the, the machine I had uh, modified at a, at a workshop in Britain to to make it. I can change it for the between 50 and 60 hertz, uh, so I can fit in cartridges from around the world, wow. from US markets and uh, uh, elsewhere. And um, yeah, so I can play all sorts of games, like some of the games I was into back then, like there was Turtles, that was Amazing. a big hit back then, and uh, Street Fighter, that one I really liked too. Um, Fighter, awesome. Yeah, the old These are like mid-90s games. Yeah, really. Yeah, those kind of things and micro machines, that stuff. It was, yeah. You sometimes have, you have an amazing taste in games. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, I know. I think we grew up. I grew up in amazing times. There was so so much awesome stuff coming out that turned out to be classics later on. So, just yeah. Just, just out of curiosity, here in Brazil, still they're relaunching the the Sega Genesis system, the 16 bits from Sega. Yeah. They're like I know the 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 Nintendo the eight bit Nintendo they came out in the U S and now they're bringing the Atari back and there's like this yeah. huge uh, nostalgia wave going out where they're bringing out the old video games but you have the original one this is so much cooler <laughs> yeah yeah I have a lot of those it's oh, another like collector's it. thing uh, I've been into like it back in the late nineties early two thousands when people were just pfft, tossing that stuff away, uh, I felt a bit too attached. So I, I, I acquired some stuff super cheap back then. So I think I have about a hundred cartridges laying around from these things from people who, who didn't want to play. So you're but, almost uh, like a hoarder too. Yeah, <laughs> almost. I'm trying to keep it down. I haven't gotten any more uh, cartridges in years. Like I tried to make be more efficient in some ways. I, managed to i got in contact with uh, some years ago with like a ukrainian hardware engineer who had made like a customized cartridge that i could run sd cards from wow. so I, I put this into my sega genesis and I, I can run all the games from one sd card so i don't really need all those so you had this, or... you had this custom made in ukraine for you uh, well, not for me. I, I just got in contact with this oh, okay. guy who who had started up a tiny production of retro stuff. That he, yeah, he was a hardware engineer and he figured out a way to do it. This is amazing because so, you you could download the ROM, not like leaving the whole piracy issue aside, but you could download the ROMs from the original games and just put it in the SD card and plug it into the cartridge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I have about uh, one thousand Sega games on this SD card. Yeah, they're like two uh, megabytes uh, each, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's really ridiculous. 
And looking back, I feel a bit ripped off in some ways, paying full retail price as a kid for some of those ga games and realizing it, it just takes up like a quarter of a megabyte once it's in the ROM. Uh, tw 20, 20 years ago, one megabyte was like a, a huge amount of memory. So don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure our kids were going to look at us and they'll say, oh, you had a two terabyte hard drive? This is laughable. And we're like, whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, times have really changed. Like, I, I think I remember, like, I had like 40 megabytes hard disk on my first, very first computer, real computer, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> I, had, I had a 20 megabyte hard drive, and every three months I had two boxes of, of those five, and a, five inch and a quarter uh, floppy disks, and I, yeah. I backed it all up and I formatted my, my hard drive. Because it will get so many bad clusters. So every two, four months, I would just save everything, back it up, format, C, two point, and I'll spend the whole afternoon doing that. This was like, oh, and, now my, and now my computer is supposed to run faster. So th this is how much technology changed. And yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's, uh, I wonder how like our grandparents or parents are going to keep up. Like, it's, I, thought, uh, I thought I was pretty much on track, but now it's like, Things are going fast. Like no, even no, no DVD drives on new machines. That I, I remember, I was super proud when I got my first uh, external uh, double-speed CD-ROM drive. Like oh, double-speed, man! Whoa! Double speed. <laughs> Amazing! You you could read a CD in 30 minutes. Yeah. 30. Years. <laughs> Uh, I don't even want to walk down this me memory lane because I got a whole bunch of stories and, and we can maybe sit down another day and talk about this. Yeah, 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 let's save that for another day. J uh, just to, yeah. to wrap things up because I see it's, it's getting very dark here. Uh, let's go quickly back to the magic cards. Uh, do you yeah. have uh, a favorite magic card or, or a few ones that you say, oh, these are really special. I'm never getting rid of, card. Get rid of them and, and you barely play with them so they won't get any finger grease or stuff like that. Yeah, well, it's a good question, this stuff. Like, I, I have so many of these cards actually acquired over the years that I hardly know which ones to pick. Like, actually, I think like the number I have is around 75,000 cards Whoa. piled up. Uh, I'm uh, assuming they're all in these boxes right behind you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can I can take something out of a sample. But uh, most of them, I, I actually play with them because uh, for me, the, the game is about fun, like to fun and play. But let's see if I can show. I have like these whole boxes of cards and all. And they're they're and all organized by like classes and years. Of how, how do you keep track? Because you have like 75,000 cards. I mean, it, yeah, well, uh, I have to sit down and say, let's play around. You like, yeah, yeah, I have organized them in boxes where I like just homemade stuff where I keep like about one year's worth of print runs in yeah. each box. So and all labeled and and kept track of that way. So, so you so, divide by year, not by, I don't know, class so you, or yeah. group or anything like that. Yes, yeah, to keep track of this, like, close to 25 years of cards is like one box per year and then uh, two or three print runs per box. So, and they, yeah. So how, how do you remember? Do you have them in, in an Excel spreadsheet or you just use your, your, your Danish super organized brain and say, <laughs> oh, let, let me just look up it all. I put the files and, oh, I got this card here. <laughs> Yeah, it, I don't know how I do it anymore. It's, it's, I think it's been growing gradually since the 1990s, and it's been on and off, on and off for some years. Some years I haven't played it at all, and then other years I've been very much into it. But I, I think I, it's somehow I have it mostly memorized. So those 15, 16,000 unique cards. It's if someone mentions the title of a card, I can go like, yeah, that print run, that time of the year, that year, this, that. Uh, it's okay. It, it's yeah. It's odd. Yeah. I guess that's a sign of some uh, geekery. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just became second nature to you. <laughs> just yeah. Just uh, one last subject. Yeah. Denmark is very famous for a very old toy that's been around for I don't know, probably more than 60, 70 years, which is Lego. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Are you into Lego? Do, do you have a lot of it? Did you play a lot of it as a kid? Yeah, yeah, I played a lot of it as a kid. Uh, but I, somehow it's a hobby I haven't really kept up with in some ways. I, I have a huge box of Lego bricks um, in the basement at my dad's place, but I haven't touched it in more than a decade. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a big thing around here. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys, many people maybe don't know, but you have, have Legoland, like Disneyland, but just for Lego, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, another place to, to visit with family it was about one hour's drive from my family home. So, yeah, my parents would take us kids there maybe once a year or something. So, very, very yeah. cool. So, very cool. So, Martin, uh, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it was amazing to learn more stuff about you, more stuff about uh, magic cards, uh, about your, your Mega Drive when I come up to Copenhagen. I'm sure we'll have to play it together because you have some... Well, absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll bring my son, we'll give him a disconnected controller so you have the illusion that he will be playing and we'll be playing each other, so... <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, and and see you now. Bye. Yeah. Well, thank you too. Bye bye. Thanks for the Bom, se você chegou aqui, meus parabéns por ter acompanhado toda a entrevista. Espero que tenha gostado. Conforme prometido, se você chegou nesse ponto, você ganhou um prêmio. E para receber esse prêmio, basta você clicar aqui embaixo no like e no subscribe, se inscrever no canal, que você vai poder receber de graça todas as atualizações e vídeos do nosso canal. Meus parabéns, um abraço, falou e até a próxima.